Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the uh, On The Go, not The On The Go, it's actually the Morning Debrief. Uh, morning Debrief, it's July the 13th, the current time is uh, just uh, close to uh, 8 o'clock and uh, a bit of a good night last night. In fact, uh, trading has been pretty good uh, across the board uh, for a lot of those that understand. Uh, we closed out the hedge the other day and uh, it was a little bit uh, dubious in terms of where we closed it out because uh, it was close to the high of the day, but uh, given the rally last night in the equity markets in Europe and the US, uh, I think we're all a little bit more comfortable that perhaps this trend is sustainable. Uh, good numbers as we know from Alcoa and where the reporting season has kicked off in the US so that should provide us with some follow through uh, in terms of good responses in terms of how stocks should behave and uh, all, all for all intensive purposes so far they're looking okay. Righty-ho, let's have a look at um, uh, just a little bit of a, uh, a wrap as to the market overall and um, we'll just quickly get onto it. There we go. <coughs> Oops, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's uh, what we wanted to see. Uh, Righty-ho, um, let's mark it. Let's have a look here quickly. Uh, general overview, the US, as we mentioned, was relatively strong across the board. The Dow Jones was up 1.44%. Uh, the S&P was up 1.54%, uh, so quite good. The NASDAQ up uh, just under 2%. Uh, the Stoke was up 1.92%, FTSE up 2 the CAC up 1.96%, and the DAC up 1.87%. So um, uh, pretty positive there. Um, just looking at um, what, obviously what happened there across the board uh, with the local markets as well. Uh, the SPY managed actually a good comeback. The SPY on SICOM closed at 4,425. That was quite positive and that was up 69 points. Let's have a quick look at the chart of the futures. Uh, so you can actually see, um, as you can see, that's a bit of a breakout there. Uh, and as you can see right at the top there. Now, <clears throat> we've got to see whether or not this is sustainable. And, uh, and I think the key is obviously going to be China. But when you look at that, uh, that style of chart there, uh, it certainly looks, looks interesting that we're at the top end of the range. And as you can see here, a little bit of a breakout, which is encouraging. That, in my mind, cements this big range and that lows in place. So I'm comfortable actually being long at these levels and uh, hopefully market will go um, low risk. And, uh, and that's what we're certainly looking for over the coming uh, couple of days. Okay, so uh, that's the SPY, uh, that's what we looked at. As we normally look at, let's look at some of the um, some of the currencies. Dollar index is obviously the key we've always. Dollar was weaker last night, and uh, there you can see that dropping below that level there. It's something that we've been looking at. Um, we look to put in trades on a break of that 83.90 uh, level, or that low. Uh, we didn't uh, put trades on, um, but um, for those that did, look, they're certainly showing good profits. Why didn't we? Um, we just had a lot of work on, and. Uh, the market escaped us. Uh, but anyway, let's see how that unfolds. Aussie Battler, 88.33 uh, on the top side of breakthrough this area. This is the area of resistance as you can see here and here. Now, if that area goes, different world. Uh, if it doesn't, um, then um, you know, we're just consolidating. One thing to note from that low there, it's sort of a nice impulsive five-wave advance. So uh, it would be quite interesting to see how that unfolds uh, in terms of Elliott parlance. Uh, Euro 127.22 is the market. Uh, price action last night was quite supportive, quite strong. Once again, at resistance level, this could be the start of a, a reasonable trend. Uh, we've really got to see how it unfolds uh, because our momentum indicators here uh, aren't signaling it as of yet. Uh, so, uh, but I still want to be long Euro somewhere, and if I do buy it here, I'm going to have to hold it for the long haul. Okay, so that's uh, that's Euro, the Aussie uh, gold. Gold bounced around a little bit, 12.11, strong night up $11. Under the range, happy being long gold around these levels. Uh, my stop is obviously below that this big trend line here, so uh, I think that you can quite happily be long and uh, don't mind gold at all at these levels. Um, obviously, this break of this trend that 700 is pretty massive, so uh, obviously a breakdown here would be a little bit dubious as to what happened. The low we had, so one knows, is around about 1184, by the way. So uh, that's the key area for me in terms of a continuation of a trend or moving into consolidation. Strong move on, move on crude last night, very strong indeed, 77.12, um, basically suggesting that um, that move to US 80, as we've mentioned in the, uh, all the reports we've had, uh, CNBC, Bloomberg and all that, this is the range and we're looking to test that 80 pretty soon. This is all on the back of economic optimism, which is creeping into the market, uh, so quite comfortable about that. Copper, uh, still going sideways, um, but this sort of pattern is reminiscent of a market that's ready to move to the top side. Okay. So, hold no regrets on that one. Takes out this high, 
then we can see it back to this level. And I think that's the sort of area which I'm actually looking at in terms of what could occur out there. Um, onto our wheats and our corns, the softs which we've looked at, um, all quite encouraging. Wheat had another strong move last night. Corn, however, was off a little bit. Um, and soybeans are relatively stable uh, at the moment there as well, uh, 1,026. Now these are all areas which we've picked to say that the grains would move higher, so I'm still quite confident uh, that this trend is in place. Um, it's just basically looking for that dip at the moment, and I feel as if the market will move into some consolidation. Okay, let's have a look at the economic calendar. Um, today we've got Westpac Consumer Confidence, the DEWR uh, School Vacancies, um, Weekly Earnings in the UK, Big numbers in the Eurozone, CPI industrial production, keep an eye on that in, from that inflationary area. Uh, that to me is going to be important. In the States we've got um, MBA applications, the Bloomberg Global Confidence uh, Index, advanced retail sales, retail sales, business inventories and the minutes of the FOMC. So I think it's going to be um, obviously uh, going into the reporting seasons um, where sort of should get some support. Uh, Intel, we've got some support from Intel, the chip maker, they turned around and said things were relatively positive and that the recovery is gaining momentum. So on the back of that, I could have probably expect to see the equity markets continuing to move higher, which is a very good thing. Some of those commodity primary import markets still should move. Um, I'm starting to get a, a warm feeling towards some of the base metals, um, but uh, one thing that is plaguing me is the fact that the dry Baltic index is not, not strong as what I'd like it to be. In fact, it's been horrendously weak over the last couple of weeks and that does concern me. But anyway, that's about from me, from me today. Hope you all have a good day and uh, we'll certainly talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.